Hello and welcome to PRTV Spurs, Paxton Road TV, the reaction show, Tottenham Hotspur 2, Luton Town 1, yesterday 3pm kickoff. How important are the three points going to be for Tottenham Hotspur? Join us as we do the reaction show. Welcome to PRTV Spurs, Tottenham Hotspur, <coughs> excuse me, two, Luton Town won yesterday and we're going to go through the reaction show of how the game went, should Spurs have got the three points, of course we should have won, we had the best, we were the better team on the day, unfortunately, you know what, it is what it is and we got the three points, so We're going to talk about the game, we're going to talk about the reaction, we're going to get Sam involved as well. But if you just bear with me for one second, because as always with live, live stuff, things don't always happen the way they're supposed to. And Sam hasn't got the link, so I am going to have to send Sam the link. But bear with me, this is what happens when you're in glorious glorious live moments anyway i hope everybody watched the game yesterday i want your thoughts and your reaction as well what did you think of the game what did you think of the performance individual players performances as well as always in the comment section please leave your comments i will get through as many as i can whichever social media you're watching us make sure if you already haven't subscribed to the channel, PRTV Spurs, just go there, give it a smash, give it a like. Nine games to go, lads. Nine games to go. And we will be with you all the way till the very end of the season, until the final kick of the game, because Spurs have still got European football to play for. And we still got to play Manchester City, Liverpool and Arsenal. And watch it all develop live on PRTV Spurs. I'm just waiting for Sam to come on. But it was, we've done the preview show on Friday. And as you may gather, Sam, myself and Sean. Sean was very, very confident that it was going to be a, a well, what, what can I? What, what was his words? He said it was a foregone conclusions. He said Spurs were going to win comfortably, so, and I think he predicted three one, if I'm right. Sam predicted three one or four one as well, um, and I said it was going to be two nil, and I said it was going to be not as hard as not as easy as everyone expects it to be, and as always. It was not as easy as we expected it to be. You've got to give Luton Town credit. Obviously, I, I, every club now that's coming to this stadium, they're going to come out, they're going to try and press us, they're going to sit back, and then they're going to, if they can get a goal like Luton did yesterday, and then sit back and then say, come on, Tottenham, what you got? What you got? Come on at us. But it is what it is. And joining me, when he sorted his camera out, it's just in the background. He's just in the background. He's flipping and flapping. I don't know what he's doing, but joining me is Mr. Sam Spurs for Life. Good evening, Sam. How are you? <laughs> You're a mute. Check that you can hear firstly. That's the first thing. Obviously, I'm on my phone, so that, that's the apologies because I'm trying to get the angles right. But that's right. The phone that's camera's right. over there and it's like, oh my God. Anyway, I'm all right. I'm good. Thank you. That's good. That's good. That's good. 
Um, so two one victory yesterday. I was just I was just saying Friday evening. I don't know if you, you was confident. Sean was very confident, and I said to you guys, didn't I? That listen, don't expect it to be an easy game, and it didn't turn out to be as hot, easy as we expected it to be. We made hard work of it. They defended like we expected them to defend. What was your take on the game then before we break down? Um, being at the game and being around the supporters that I was, we, it was a sense of relief at the end, disappointment during the game with the performance and obviously the lack of what seemed to be clear-cut opportunities in terms of clear-cut in the box sort of thing. But then when you look back, and I guess you watch a match of the day and it tells you that your XG is 2.96 and stuff like that, you kind of have a di different sense and you look at just the highlights. So overall, um, disappointed with the performance, I guess, as a whole, but the result was all that bad. I think we're getting to that stage of the season now where we sort of know where Angie's going. We sort of know the project ahead. We know what we're going to get with certain players. And I think now, I don't know if you agree or not, I think now it's probably going to be points over performances to get to where Postacoglu wants this team to be at the end of the season. I don't, I've not, to be fair, all season, I've not seen, apart from the Villa game, that's about it really. We have seen proper actual Spurs, you know, good performance from start to finish. We seem to be a team of two halves. Or we seem to be a team where we only play 45 minutes. And we'll sort of, if we get time, because I know you've got to go and I've got to go as well. But a couple of things that Foster Coglu said in the um, conference after the game, which was quite interesting. <sighs> Are you going to be happy with the start then, just claiming the three points week in, week out and over performance now? No, because the manager said that he prefer performance over points. He said that clearly. He'd rather be finished fifth playing well than finish fourth, not playing so good or thinking you've got a chance for the next season. So if that's what he said, you have to then go by the performances that the players put out. Because he said that. It's not me. It's not you. He said that. So when we played badly and, and won, I've heard Postacoglu kind of be very negative about the team and, and not necessarily negative, but say things that are, you know, not necessarily his positive influence. But I didn't hear the post match, so I can't say what he said about the game, whether he was pleased with the performance, whether he was pleased. But there were aspects of the game that I I just wasn't happy with. And there was things, again, players, individuals that we've talked about that we might need to have, as I've mentioned before, uncomfortable conversations with. Yeah, yeah. Right, so let's break this down then, Sam. <clears throat> first off, then I've done it as what well, I normally do. First off, right, <clears throat> seventy-four percent possession to Luton's twenty-six. Seven shots, they had four. We had one on target, they had one on target, and they scored. Three off target, one off target. Shots in and outside the box, we had six in, one out. Shake it all about, and then they had four in. None from outside the box. 340 passes, 87%. They had 116, 70%. Passes in the opposition box, we had 149. They had 23. And then touches in the opposition box, we had 25. They had seven. For a home team... Is that passes, is that passes in the opposition half or box? Because that's a lot if it's in the opposition box, box. 149. Passes in the opposition, half. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say, and the touches in the box. the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. Okay. So if you look at those stats, you take out possession, you probably take out passes. And if you take out, you know, touches in, in the opposition half, it's a fairly equal, even type stat, if you put it that way. Because we can't really base control of... Spurs in terms of a game by possession anymore because the possession that we have is not in terms of areas which is going to hurt them. A lot of that possession is in, and I watched it, you watched it yourself, is in our half. It's us playing centre-back, back to keeper, 
back out, blah, blah. And when they play out from the back, they play from the keeper, to the centre back, and they try and keep possession. And everything's very much rigid in that sense, in terms of that. But I think the opposition and Liverpool, Luton, effectively let us have the ball yesterday. As I said in previous shows, I know a formation that will, if you put it up, that you won't stay like it. A 4 3 one, two is, is what you would sell. And that's exactly what they had. But what they had is they had rotational. So when Madison comes out, there would be a centre-back that would come out and meet him. When we rotated with Son, there was the, they always had a back four. They rotated players. And that's what you call tactics. And that's from a Luton manager. And they worked it. And I thought they did all right. And they got the first goal. And they could have actually held out for a draw. They didn't. But that's a Luton manager. Let that sink in. Luton Town's manager had a way of playing that had he had more quality, they would have won that game. In yeah, because they, they, they had opportunities, didn't they? Yeah, but like I said, they if you look at the shots on target, that's ultimately what you're looking at. You know, shots off target, you know, yeah. shots in and outside the box, it might be here or there. They had four shots yeah. in the box and they had one shot on target. We had six shots, we had one on target. So they're obviously better at shooting than us currently. Yeah. And one one thing else we've gathered all season is Paxton Road people. They need to swap their season tickets for the south uh, for the uh, south stand because Tottenham don't want to score in the Paxton Road, and do they? Even when they had the opportunities, they didn't want to score. So you know what? <laughs> it's it's uh, it's one of them, isn't it? Where we're just they're not scoring at the Paxton Road, in, and I think a lot of the Paxton Road fans are getting now pissed off now because it's just getting nope. ridiculous. Those- those packed and road in people, they want to get sassed. <laughs> the season tickets next season. I feel sorry. I'm telling you. Wowzers. Right. So, first off performance, right? That was that. And people were saying that they need to make a substitution. And we were like, well, you know what? Poster Cogley doesn't make substitutions at half time. But he must have realised how shit Cooley was playing. And I think... And also, I think Cooley was... I, I don't know about you, but Partly to blame, majority of the blame goes down to Kulu because he's had the opportunity to shoot when he's gone through and instead he's gone and passed it to nobody and they've gone on and yes, Basuma's a bit of a fault as well and they've scored. Had he even had an attempt at shot or done something, that probably doesn't materialise. So he's probably looked at that at half-time and thought, right, do you know what? Shocked a lot of people that he took Kulu off and then he changes it brings on an actual right-sided player who likes and wants to play on the right, and now he's becoming our super sub. And then it goes to 66%, 34% possession, 10 Tottenham shots, they, Luton had three, Spurs had three on target, they had two on target, off target Spurs had four, Luton had none. Shots and inside and outside, Spurs had eight, two, Luton had nothing on, and three from outside the box. 269 passes at 82% rate. They had 138 passes, 69% rate. Passes in the opposite half, Spurs had 107, 41. 26 touches inside the box as opposed to four. Now, what I will say to you on this one is he was asked that question. What did you say to them, Ange, at half time? You know what his answer was? What? I didn't say nothing. It's down to the players. I didn't say a word to them. <laughs> I don't say nothing to them at half time. It's down to the players. So, my question then is, if it's down to the players, what, the, why, what are they doing in that first half of them? Why? I mean, something is said or something is done at half time. I categorically said yesterday that I didn't say anything because that was the first question they asked him and he said, nope, it's not me. It's down to the players. And um, is there any delay? Just check it. There's no delay. No, yeah, go on. Carry on. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I don't believe that nothing was said. I, I can't... We weren't playing good enough. So... The manager made a half-time sub. So, obviously, he didn't just say to the players, you all go back out there and show me what, what you didn't do in the first half. He made a tactical change. He brought somebody else on. That's a tactical change 
whether it's like for like or not, it's still a tactical change because Johnson's a different player. So something mm. had to be said, regardless of what, how, how long or how much or what, something had to be said. So, yes, we had to make substitution at half-time. I think we could have made more than one. Again, Kulu was an obvious one for me. He can't yeah. beat his player on a 1v1 situation. He's got a bit of trickery and you can get by if the ball's played. And sometimes if you've got five yards head start, he's a little bit more effective. But he's not beating his player and then going on and bursting and doing all this. But Johnson effectively got two assists yesterday. Again, going back to him, he's an impact player. This is what I expect him to do. Yeah. But we need somebody ahead of him who's going to now be that player. I thought that would have been Kulu. We'll see. Yeah. You're stuck in, you're sticking, freezing, sticking, freezing, and then you're coming back on. Um, okay. But, right. yeah. But um, the other thing as well is if you if you watched it on Match of the Day, uh, if you watched it on Match of the Day yesterday, every time Johnson got the ball on the right, given goal, and he was past that right back or their defenders, he was gone for pace. Burned them, burned them. In that first half, I swear they were all sitting there with a Cadbury's caramel and a cigar because when Kulu got the ball, because they exactly knew what was going to happen. And I don't think Kulu beat anyone once. Whereas as soon as Johnson came on, it was just, you could you could sense it. You could sense it. And I think um, we'll talk about that as well in a second when we do the players. But overall, Sam, it was. So overall, 70% possession to Luton's 30 we expected that because Luton got that early goal and then I think they were just going to sit back because they knew they weren't going to get a, a, a second goal. So they just sat back and we had all the possession. But like you keep saying, as always, what we do with that possession, where is that actual possession? Does it actually mean anything? 17 shots, Luton had seven. We had four on target, which still I think at home you should be having a lot more on target. Three for Luton. Seven off target, one off target. Shots inside and outside the box. We had 14 inside and three outside. Luton had four in and three out. 609 passes, 85% success. I think should have been better. Poor passing was shocking yesterday. 254 to their 69%. Passes in the opposite half, 256. They only had 64 and we had 51 touches inside the box to their 11. Shall I tell you something else, Sam? Mm. The last home game we had, Crystal Palace, guess how many touches we had inside the box? Probably that. 51. These players are, are, are very much coached in a certain way. You can see that. The ratio, if you look at the ratio of shots, Inside and outside the box, that's effectively three from 17 outside the box and three from seven from um, Loon. If someone works out the percentages, I guess you could say that's going to be around about 50, well, just under 50% for them and a lot less than 50% for us. So it clearly shows me that we're not a team that shoots outside the box. We've always been saying that. We keep saying, why don't they shoot from outside the box? Because they're coached to create the best opportunity to score goals. Now, I've done all the, the stats and where goals are scored from is in and around the, the, the third zone, which is that six-yard box area up until and around the, the penalty spot. So if most goals are scored from there, that's where you want to get the ball, blah, 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 blah. But if you've got a lot of players in there, you can't necessarily get the ball into that area. So there's space elsewhere. That's where... Anyway, not going into that. Again, forget the possession stats. I think look at the shots on target for us. Look at the shots on target for them. That's ultimately where the goals come from. They scored one, we scored two. And we probably had an XG that was quite high in terms of being nearly three. So our, our chances that we created eventually when we got to the shots on target were good. But there were so many opportunities to get better opportunities to score. And we didn't do that enough, in my opinion. Luton had a game plan. And had they had better quality, they could have done better. I, uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. I had, I, had, I mean, Barkley was playing quite well. He I was think good. Had, had their fit players and their full strength squad, I think they would have caused us a lot more trouble than, you know, than they did yesterday. Um, and you know what? We, we, I don't know, there's still things missing. I don't know. I just don't know. I, I, 
I think I'm, I don't, I'm, see, I'm not uh, inside the information. I don't have a crystal ball or don't have some form of being able to know. But I, I, we know how they play. You know, the formation of, if you allow us to have the ball 70% of the time, you know our patterns of play. We're going to play out from the back. We're going to play into possibly the number six, which is Pasuma. He might then play it back to a centre back. The centre back might play it to the midfield, or sorry, not a midfielder necessarily. It could be the full back that's playing in midfield. Or if they can't get it to him, they'll try and get it further forward into Madison. Madison drifts. Around. So I can see all these things. So if you're a good tactician at any sort of decent level coaching, not even Premier League level, but decent level coaching, all right. You see them patterns of play. What's the best formation? All right. If I get a 4 3 1 2 in there on the transition, if they've only got two centre backs and all their other players are forward, including their full backs, where's the space? The space is in the wide areas. How, how did they get their first goal, Sid? Their only goal. We, it was given away, and I keep saying about unforced errors. The ball was given away. And where did they attack? They attacked that space. There was no full back there. Basuma was having to chase back. Dragonson's out of position. Romero's out. They, the ball goes across. Where's the other fullback? No idea. They score yeah. a goal for it. Yeah, hundred percent. Simple. Simple. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you keep saying that, don't you? Week in, week out, like it's unforced Every errors. Time. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, exactly. Sam, I think <clears throat> you're glitching and you're okay. you're freezing quite heavily. So what I would do is, if, okay. if you want, just just come off camera and just do the um, the voice if you want. Okay. Because yeah. it is quite bad. You're glitching. Right. So, team-wise then, obviously, the back five is what I predicted. Dragusin, Romero, Poro, and Destiny at the back. Bissouma, Saw, Madison, and then you had Kulu on the right, Werner on the left, and Son in the middle. Sam, yes. Dragusin as a left centre-back. Doesn't work for me. Um, what's your thoughts on that? I think we need him over Ben Davis because of his aerial presence. I think he's got better recovery than probably Ben Davis has, but I understand playing out from a right side of player on a left side of position isn't helpful particularly if you're under a lot of pressure, particularly if the team knows what you're going to do with your patterns of play as well. You can then force someone to be on their weaker foot, blah, 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 blah. So I understand that maybe it doesn't seem as if he's the best fit, but I think we need the aerial ability from him. Corner set pieces, because obviously they're targeting certain players now with Gakari in, in the goal. So, yeah, I'm, I think we might have to stick with Dragons if Van der Ven's not fit. And I think, also, I think, if you if you think about it, yeah, yesterday we could have got away with Ben Davies playing there as a left back because he's left sided. So I think it would have been all right because Lute and all the aerial threat they didn't have anything because the two main strikers were missing. So nothing went over the top. Everything was on the floor for them or pace wise. So you know, I mean, I'm not saying we he shouldn't be playing drug you see. And I just I'm just like there's a few times where a right sided player playing as a left centre back he you can tell. That's not yeah. his natural position. Yeah, you I agree. I, mean? I, I do agree. But if you have to look at it from another perspective, who was who's the better defender? Well, you could argue that point. Obviously, Ben Davis being in, in at the club longer, but yeah. we bought Dragerson for a reason. Of if course, we then revert back to Ben Davis and he's available. What does that say for him? Oh yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. But yeah. I'm just worried that when you when you when we're going to get City or Arsenal or somebody like that at home. But, but anyway, we'll talk about that when that comes. Right, the midfield three then. What did you think yeah. of Basuma's performance? Second half was better. First half, not great. Again, I don't think he's been commanding enough in that position. He did literally play the lone six yesterday because Saul was pretty much on the attack. Uh, Madison had a bit more of a free roll, but Saul was definitely playing as an eight and he was playing really close uh, to the strikers uh, and getting himself in goal-scoring positions. Basuma needs to do more. Um, I think he needs to look less lackadaisical in terms of just, you know, he kind of has this sort of like nonchalance way of doing stuff. Yeah, that's great when you're when you're a player of top, top quality, but when you give the ball away and you make mistakes and you then don't get back sometimes and blah, blah, it makes it the other part of your game not so good. So Basuma, 
it was okay second half, better second half, not so good the first half. So I think ran out of steam. Madison yeah. looked like he ran out a bit of steam, although he seemed disappointed to come off. Uh, but I think the so the subs that came on, I think the subs did well, to be honest with you. Yeah, I I, I think the sooner you're right. Um, and I didn't realise that but when the player has been substituted and you're walking around the pitch, how are you? Are you not? You're not allowed to come back on the pitch. Oh, you can celebrate. So I'm surprised you didn't get yellow card for that one. Um, I think Madison was very quiet. I don't think he influenced the game at all yesterday. I think he was very, very quiet, and you could tell because there was nothing happening. And if he's not on point, I think we're going to struggle big time, big time. Right, front three then. And also, Toxic is asking, do you think we should sign Moen? I've got my thoughts on that one. I want your thoughts in a minute. Um, I think Kulu was poor again. Son did a lot of... Son did what he did, and he obviously gets his goal in the end. I think Werner did well when he was actually played the ball and he made the wrong. Don't forget, he, he was, you know, at the, causing havoc. He was the one that got the first... Helped with the first one. And he runs and he's passing and that. He was getting behind the players, their defenders. So I think he done all right again. Can I say something to this Timo Werner thing? I'm sorry, it's not it's not aimed at you. Obviously, it's not aimed at you, Sid. But Timo Werner, he does cause havoc. But so does Adama Traore. He causes havoc. We don't want him in our team. No. Timo Werner's not going to score the goals that we want. I, I knew yesterday he wasn't going to score. You can see it in him. He's just, he's a player that will cause problems. But at the end of the day, I would always let him shoot. I'd almost let him get past me and see if he's going to make to make a cross because he's going to beat you for pace most of the time, but yeah. he's not going to do much after that. And that's why I don't think he's a he's good enough. He's an impact player, but we've already got impact players. But hasn't Postacoglu already said, I'm not expecting him to score goals. I've brought him in to be a part of the team, a squad player, and make impact when as, as necessary. And I think he does that now, whether, whether he'll do it better if he's off the bench or whether he starts, that is the question. Other thing is, as well, is for 15 million in the summer, you, I think that's money well spent on somebody tried and tested in the Prem rather than go and spend some stupid money on a player that you don't know what you're going to get out of. Whereas, at least with him, you know. And as a squad player, I think you cannot go wrong because that makes your bench stronger as well. So for 15 million, I think you can't really say no. And I think Ange will keep him as a squad player, as Toxic head, uh, Headshot is saying here. I think Ange will say yes and keep him as a squad player. Because Sam, well, what, you, what can you get for 15 million that is going to be better than Werner for that 15 million? Um, so you have, to look, you have to look elsewhere. You have to look at other areas of the market to try and make that. Now, you might go for a player that's not got a team of Werner in the name, but he's just the name. I've seen enough stats for Chelsea. I've seen what he's done at Leipzig. He's not a player that's going to, even as an impact player, yeah, you might be scared of his pace, but that goes the same as I said before for Adama Traore. He's an impact player. He makes people fret, get worried because of his pace, but he don't do anything. I'd let him get past me, let him cross it. He's going to end up in the stand. Let him shoot. He's probably going to end up in Rose Ed. Yeah. Timo Werner's not going to score many goals for us and he's not going to get many assists. What he will do is he'll get past defenders and he'll create the havoc, as you said, but the end product, we got end product yesterday from, from Brennan Johnson and he's an impact player. Let that be the impact and try either back it up with a, a good, solid player on that wing side or get another centre forward and let some be the winger. Yeah, I... I personally think Ange will buy him for 50 yeah, million. I think you're right. But as I said, I'm, I'm, I know how then where we're going in terms of our transfer policy. Yeah. I mean, for 15, you get him. And then, like you said, you go and then get, obviously, if you want to go and get somebody, 15 million. Because for me, Solomon can go back. Uh, Gil's going. So we need at least another left-sided player anyway. Because Son's not going to be able to do it unless we go and buy a number nine next season. Uh, but do you, do you do you think there's enough goals and or assists in Timo Werner for us to go from fifth, because it's currently where we are, to any higher in the league next season with the current squad that we've got? So if we don't get better than him and we accept him as being the, the player that comes in on the left side, we get nobody else. 
is that going to make us better this season than, than this season? It's not. We need a better player on that left-hand side or we need yeah. to change up, get a better player up front and then maybe change the system, i.e. play, um, I don't know, is it um, Son back on the left or you can change Kudu on, I don't know, but something different and have a strong striker. I just don't think if we go into next season with Kulu, Timo Werner, Brennan Johnson, Son, that's enough. And I don't think it'll be enough. I don't think it is going to be enough. And I think Postacoglu knows that. And I think he's already got plans already, uh, you know. So it's that question that we're going to have to have at the end of the season, beginning of, in the summer window to see what happens. And obviously, yes. as always, it's down to Daniel Levy, isn't it? So Yes. And I think then if, if you, all right, okay, and I said this and I've said this, Privately, but I'm going to say it publicly. If I see that Tio Werner gets signed, I will understand what our transfer policy is about and I will understand what I think the club is about. And it cannot then be that we're going to try to push on to win trophies. We might try and push on to play better football and look really good, but trophy winning football is not about necessarily playing pretty football all the time. It's about a winning team, winning mentality. I don't think he's got the mentality to even be close to a winning team. Team, in my opinion, Team of Werner. He looks looks like a nice guy. You can't yeah. see anything in his eyes. There's no fire. There's no desire. It's just, yes, I, I played good. Yes, I nearly scored today. That's what it's like. It's, that's, yeah. it's not enough, man. It's not enough. It's true. And Giant Rabbit saying here, no, we're not winning anything with Kulu, Johnson, Werner and Richarlison. It's clear the club are simply refusing to compete. So it's top four again next season. I agree with that statement. Yeah. If, if if that's if that's what we do for next season, we don't improve on Timo Werner as a forward player. That's what I would I would agree with that statement. Yeah, and uh, pa- Paul Pablo is also saying the truth. Besides Sonny, we have too many mediocre players, and this this is it. I mean, we're we're judging a lot of these players under half a season on with Postacoglu. Next season, obviously, Postacoglu's had them under his belt for half the season. He's trying to get his philosophy, his way of playing into the players. Next season is the season where now these some of these players that the Kulus, the Johnsons, the um the Werners, people like that, the Madison not Madisons, but the Saw, not even Saw, Basumas and people like that is where the real deal will, will have to be next season. And if it's not working, then we know that these players are not, you know, suited to the way he is. Right. So Johnson substitution, and then I think these two made a bit of an impact as well. I think Benton Court and Lacelso coming on made a bit of difference, and then obviously Hoiberg came on straight after we scored the goal, <coughs> throw it up completely. But, but I think Benton Court and uh, Lacelso came on. Lacelso wasn't in it that much, but there was a lot of hustle and bustle from him, like he always does, and I think Benton Court done quite well. There was that one ball that he played was which was. Absolute mental, absolute mental. But overall, I think. What did you think of the uh, other three substitutions, Sam? Four substitutions. The four substitutions. So who came on first? Obviously, that was uh, Johnson was came on first. Johnson. Then Benton Court and Lacelso. Then Richarlison and then Hoiberg. Okay, I don't think Richarlison and Hoiberg had enough time to read. Really no. So I'm saying that we've done a couple of little bits, but Michelle said a couple of little bits, but nothing too significant. Johnson was the most significant. So I thought Lasso had decent decent in parts. But I think this the Johnson was definitely the, the game changer as an impact player should be. He had two assists yesterday. So yeah, yeah if you're looking at it from a perspective of am I happy from that side of things, yeah, if we have Brennan Johnson if we keep Brennan Johnson as that player to be the player to come on and maybe develop. Remember, he's only 22, 23. So he has got a little bit more time on his hands than someone like Timo Werner, who's 26, 27. We're not paying Brennan Johnson anywhere close to £165,000 than what we're paying Timo Werner currently. Yes, he cost 40, 50 mil, but we overpaid to get him because Forrest were in a bit, a bit of storm. But that money will we get back. If we even sell Brennan Johnson in three years' time, we'd get that money back, even if we yeah. don't do much. So that was a no brainer. And he's doing what he's supposed to do, coming on, having an impact. That's it. That's it. And he got managed a match as well on talk sport and places like that. Jack Rabbi, I'd like to give you something positive. For Kulu Johnson and Werner are our marquee signings and we'll most likely sign a young kid like Noosa or Rooney Bogji in the summer window. 
and I think you might be right. Um, he's also comparing us to Liverpool, but don't forget Liverpool and some of these players have been on the clock for quite a while. Diaz has eight and three assists. Nunes has ten and six. Jota has nine and four. Salah has fifteen and seven. That's why they're eleven points ahead of us. Toxic headshot. Benton Cole was looking great with Lacelso and Johnson is much better off the bench. The, the, the problem is, if he's better off the bench, then <coughs> that we're going to have to go and get somebody who's better than him, who can start the game. I know. And, yeah. This is what I'm saying. So this is what I'm saying about the policy for next season. If Timo Werner is that player, because obviously that would be a competition for Johnson, Kulu, Mano Solomon, if he stays or goes... But that will be their competition for the front places. Yeah, right. Agreed. Of those players, there's not much of a toss-up between Timo Werner and Brennan Johnson in terms of the actual outputs. But at this moment in time, Brennan Johnson's giving you more. But I look at what what's the pros and cons. He's a lot younger, one for one thing. Yes, he's, he's British. That's another thing. He's English. So that makes another plus point for us. And I think he's, he's, he's got more ability long-term than what Werner has. So if you buy Werner... You're going backwards, yeah. in my opinion. And, I, and I'll, I'll add to that, Sam. Johnson, Werner and Solomon is not, for me, three left-sided players that are good enough on a rotational basis to get us where we want to get to. And I think Pasta Coglu as well. Out of them three, if the push comes to the shelf, Johnson's the only one that you would want to keep. Yeah? But mm -hmm. we know this. Daniel Levy, is he going to give the money to go for Spurs to go on and Foster Coglu to go out and buy the players that he wants? The answer is going to be no. Solomon, I think he's another Brian Gill. Too lightweight, um, all the tricks, but it's not for me. And if the, if the club we bought him from are kicking off about the payments and that, just get send him back. You know what I mean? It's not cost us anything, so we're not going to lose up. Send him back and then, like you said, go and buy... Go and buy better. So Go this is this is one a player that Darius 3K likes. I, I I wouldn't like to admit that he's a it, right. Okay, he's a good player, but he's not someone that I like. Fancy. He's a West Ham player, Jared Bowen. If you went and got Jared Bowen, we could have done that about four years ago. Right, that would be an upgrade on Timo Werner. He's an England yes. player. He would definitely score goals. He, you can see what he's been doing. He's a player that looks like he's got a bit of. A, I I I personally. I'm not overly keen on him, but I've been told to watch him. And if he's not better than the team of Werner is, then we've got a problem. He is clearly. And that's the sort of player that we should have. He's about the same sort of age, if I'm not mistaken, as Timo, 27, 26, 27. Someone tell me in the comments if anybody knows. I might be completely wrong. But Who, yeah, Timo Werner? Not Timo Werner. Um, Jared Bowen. I think they're around about the same sort of age, possibly. But yeah, that's who we need to get. That's We need those sort of players who are going to make a difference, who are going to score goals. There's not many of them about, but there are players that you can be got to this. Look at that, Diaby. There's players Two, out there. 27, yeah. Do you know what? Three players at West Ham, yeah? Three players at West Ham that should be... I don't know how they got them, but Paqueta, Kudus, even Gerard Bowen would slot into our team any straight away. Straight I think. away. Straight away. Because Kudus... How West Ham got in from Ajax, I don't know. What you know? What he's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. How they even... got Paqueta? How the hell did they get Paqueta? Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. And this is what I'm saying about Spurs. Those players, they were available. They were both available. We, we didn't, didn't do pay. the Paqueta deal. We didn't do Kudos because I don't know if anybody else was was, was interested. But we didn't do it. There's other teams, yeah. Brighton have done it. There's other teams that have made those marks. Baston Villa have done it in the market as well. I keep yeah. saying about them. It can be done. But if you're if we're if we're already targeting a player like Timo Werner, I'm, I'm sorry to keep going on about him because you could just, he's not getting better. He won't get better next season. People think, oh, we got it because he's now signing the other summer. He won't. I'm yeah. telling you that now. But unfortunately. We know where this narrative goes, don't we, with Daniel Levy? But well, I'm waiting we for the summer. Out. I'm going to wait. We will find that in the summer, in, exactly. Yeah, exactly. End of the summer, right. We will we'll know. And the problem is as well, like Toxic is saying here, West Ham ain't going to sell us, sell them free plays to us. We, we, we're never going to get them. 
at all. Polina is another one at Fulham. We we'll probably end up one getting him as well. So we've missed the ball on four players that technically should would have absolutely smashed our team, and that that would have been the difference from title race, top four, even even the title. That would have made a massive, massive difference. And I agree with what Giant Rabbit is saying here. West Ham are trying to win things. Spurs aren't. That's why they sign players like Kudos on the wings. Spot on. Spot on. And we'll find out in the summer. We will find out. Right, Sam. Yep. As it stands then, Arsenal are not top anymore. So ignore that. I think Liverpool are top to 65, 67. Two points clear of um, Arsenal. City of third, and then Aston Villa on 59 points, Spurs on 56 points. I mentioned before, we're just neck and neck with them too because they had a good win yesterday. We had a good win. So it's all to play for then, right? And we've got, guess who we got on Tuesday, Sam? Yeah, West Ham. West Ham, West Ham away. <clears throat> yep. yep. And it ain't going to be a good, I tell you what, it's going to be, it's going to be very tough. The problem, I think, the West Ham game is, Again, tactically, he'd know how to play against Spurs. And your manager doesn't mind um, negating your own way of playing to get a result. The ideal manager is Davy Moyes. <laughs> Unfortunately, he doesn't give a F. He will be defensive at home. He don't care. He'll play whatever it needs to do to get the result. And if that means them looking ugly and then playing off the, the back foot and playing low blocks, mid blocks, whatever, they will do that. But they'll mix their game up because they've got quality players to do that. That's what we're going to have to contend with. He's not going to allow them not to fight. He's not going to say, oh, don't worry about it. Be passive, lads. But it's almost like we go out there very passive. We can't. We have to go to that stage and when they expect to fight. Yeah, especially after, obviously, we'll, we'll talk, we'll do the preview anyway, but especially after the way they got beat by Newcastle after being 3 1 up. So they'll be hurting. They'll be hurting. And it's it's going to, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not looking forward to it because I, I know what we, they did to us at our stadium. I was there for that game and you was there. So you know exactly what we pillied them off the park and they just ended up beating us. So it's going to be an interesting game. And we'll talk about that on Monday evening or whenever we do the um, preview show. Sam, final thoughts then on the performance yesterday um, and what happens going forward? West Ham game. Yeah, I'll be. I'll try to be brief. There's, there's a quite a few fans that were again it's very, very mixed reactions. Regard, we are allowed to criticize game by game. I know people are saying, "Oh, it's his first season. We shouldn't do this. He's got given chance. We ain't got to play better." But we can't really use that ex excuse when he says certain things. As the manager, he told me that we're looking to improve game by game. That's what he's looking for. I'm looking for improvement, not necessarily results. I'm, I've not seen any improvements from the stats. The stats have not improved. We're still getting people um, having opportunities. Us, we're still conceding goals early. We're still looking like we're vulnerable. We're not blazing teams out of the water. Apart from when we beat Black, was it Brighton we beat recently? Um, yeah. So again, we, we've we've got to we've got to be realistic. It's still a work in progress, and our system, our whole philosophy. And system of the way we play relies on quality in all areas of the pitch and the next one's down. And unfortunately, we don't necessarily have that in all areas, but we've got three points. And if we get top four this season, it would be a good season from that perspective. But I want to win silverware, mate. That's what I want to see next season. Yeah. I think Jane Rabbit is saying here he's spot on. I think Angie's working with what he's given and it shows on the field because most can't play his style of play. And that is the issue. He's got players there. Yeah. He's got players there that need a either need to adapt and adapt quickly to the way Postacoglu wants him them to play. Otherwise, if you're not going to be able to, then um the only 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 thing is Angie's gonna to say to them, you know what, if you can't adapt to my system, then there's no point you being here. And certain players, people might be some people's favourites, but it is what it okay. is at the end of the day. So, I'm going to put this this way and I'll ask you, and we can be quick on this, if Ange gets all the players that he necessarily wants, let's say he gets the players that he wants, do you think then that we would be 
in a position to be better than Liverpool, City, Arsenal currently. Considering they're going to improve as well. Because they're not going to stand still. The thing is, if Ange gets the players that he wants, what you've got, what we've got to understand is they may be top players at their relevant clubs. However, once you come to Spurs and once you could start and play Ange's system, unless you're very, very that good that on you're on it straight away, on the money straight away, it's going to take players time to adapt. With the players that we've got, with the way that we play. If Ange gets the players, I think we can be up there. Yeah, we can be up there. Better than. To win something, we have to be better than them. Yeah, and look, in the Cups, you don't have to be better because other teams will eliminate other teams. So you've just got to do what you've got to do to win the Cup and get a bit of luck, you win the Cup. You don't necessarily have to be better. But What you said was, what you've got to do, what you've got to do, but we don't do what we've got to do. We play the same way. Angie's going to play the same way. In Cups, I think sometimes you have to adapt just to get through a round. You might not be at home. You might be in a real... You might have to do something differently to get through. And I'm not sure we're we're a Cup team. I think we're a league team if we get all the players, but a Cup team, I ain't so sure. I'm not so sure. Like Pablo saying here, and then we'll we'll cut it. I think we need to go. Top four... Is no point if you're only in it to make up the numbers. 100%. Yeah. And that is 100%. And this is why I personally don't want Champions League next year because we're only in it to make the numbers. If we can't win the PL when there's only Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, really, Champions League, you've got the cream, creme de la creme of clubs. But it's a different format. Creme, different format next season. It's, it's more a different format, format as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah so it's, it's, it's probably more lucrative that we are in it because there's more league format based on. Before the, the the knockouts, knockouts don't start till quite late now. So, but they want to be in it. They want to be in it for the money because we're not going to yeah. win it realistically. Of hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah. And it's going to be more of a hindrance than anything. I'd rather we go in the Europa League because we we've got a better chance, and I think we could win the Europa League. Yeah, but agreed. Champions League, you know what? It is what it is. But these are conversations, Sam, on talking mm-hmm. points towards the end of the yeah. season, stuff like that. We we'll do the squad reviews and Definitely. whatever everything that we do. Um, I've got to go. I know you've got to go. Thank you, everybody in the comments section. Jane Rabbit, thank you very much for all your comments. Paul Pablo, Toxic Headshot, Dino Dinosaur, everybody watching on whichever social media you're watching us on. Thank you very much. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you smash that channel because we'll be coming back up this week with the preview show for the West Ham game, reaction show, and also there'll be a talking point. And I'm sure Sam have picked up a couple of points on this one, so we'll probably discuss that I have a oh, so the game's Tuesday, so Wednesday for talking points. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, Sam, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. As Sorry always. About the stream. Sorry about that's the all right. Quality. It is what it is. This is what happens on live TV, on live tube streaming. It always doesn't go to plan. We know that we've been there. But thank you for coming on. Thank you, everybody else. Hope you have a good rest of the Sunday evening which is almost gone and enjoy the rest of the week West Ham on Tuesday we got the three points we're still in the shout for the top we've got the rest of the teams to play all I'm going to say and end with as always is come on you Spurs come on let's get it going let's nine games to go let's do what we've got to do let's go out there and get the points Thank you very much. We will see you soon. Take care.